Moments ago, I ended our interview with Donald Trump. Uh, listen, here's what he had to say about the possibility of facing Joe Biden. You would beat Joe Biden easily? Well, I think I would. Yeah, I think I would. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know that he's going to do it. I would think he wouldn't do it. Now, I might be wrong about that. I would think he wouldn't do it because I think it's a very hard road for him at this point. It's late, and I think it's a hard road. So he is saying he doesn't think that Joe Biden will run, but if he did win, run, Trump would beat him easily. Look who's here. Fox News contributor mm. Tamara Holder, a big supporter of Joe Biden, if I'm not mistaken. Are you not? Today you're not hallucinating. I'm, I, I am a big supporter. Thank you very much indeed. So what do you make of uh, Donald Trump? You think Trump, I love could, that Trump says he could beat Biden if he runs, and you say? I love that he challenged Biden just now. I love if, if the best thing could be if Donald Trump challenged me. It would give me so much power. He can't run. It's too late. Like Trump has this, you know, the whole thing in the back. He doesn't. Well, Trump, Trump is going to lose. He, At the Trump end of the day, Trump is run. the loser. Donald Trump wants Joe Biden to run. Right, because, because he, he wants, wants the Democrats split and beat them up, beat up each other on the run up to the election. Correct. But it really doesn't matter what Trump wants. I think the Democrats want him to run. Ooh, how many people have said it doesn't matter about Trump and they really, really lost it? You just have that big Cheshire cat smile because you interviewed him just now. That's all <laughs> this is about. But he was great. I mean, he, he's a great interview. He's entertaining. The man is. You're gripped. You listen to it. You watch what's going on. Right, but I don't want a clown in the office. Hey, stop and, it. I mean, and entertaining. Call names. And not entertaining. You know, I, I I get it. He's entertaining. I'm not calling him a clown. You can't but call the man a clown. The man is leading in all the polls. For the last 99 days, he's won every single national poll. You cannot call the man a clown. Okay, I'll take that back then. He's Please. run. He's won every single national poll. But then you can't say that the other polls about Hillary winning, if she, if if. Uh, uh, you know, Biden doesn't get in the race, that that doesn't count. Because at the end of the day, when you have the two, <laughs> at the end of the day, Hillary's going to win or Biden is going to win. Okay, now hold Trump on. is not winning. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. What was the last word? Trump is not winning. Absolutely not. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay. Uh, now, I want to show you, Tamara, I want you to listen to Joe Biden at an event this morning in D.C. Roll that tape. It's coming. When I go, they know that I am speaking for the president. There is no, nothing missed between the lip and the cup that whatever I say, the president is saying. And so it's a great advantage for a president to be able to have that in, in, in someone because the job is so big. Okay, Tamara, that, that sound of it, if he were elected, he would be elect we would be electing a third Obama term. He's like that with the president. He's like that with the president, but he's just shadowed him for eight years. It doesn't necessarily mean that you get Obama for a third term. Remember, he's gone to the Ukraine. He's, he's traveled extensively. He has way more foreign difference. policy. No, There's I don't think so. There's not much space between Joe Biden and Barack Obama. I think this is an opportunity for him to get the okay from Obama to say, I'm going to distance myself from you on these points, and I'm going to stick with you on the other points. Just because you were Obama's vice president doesn't mean that you're Obama Jr. Did, you, did that clip that we just ran of Joe Biden, did he look like a man who has the vigor and the focus to run a presidential campaign for the next 13 months? I think he has the focus of still trying to determine whether or not he's going to run. Does he have the vigor? Yeah, he definitely has the vigor, but really? he's, you know, in 2008, he said you just can't parachute into running for president. And so I think right now he's wondering, am I going to be parachuting into this? But we still have over a year to go. True. Well, so, do you want him to run? You do, uh, yes. You? You, you're you're a Biden gal, so to speak. I'm an, uh, yes. Is that because you think Biden could win and Hillary can't? Or you think Biden's policies are better than Hillary's policies? I don't think it's better or worse. It's a matter of, I don't like Hillary Clinton, and I've said that many times. She's not trustworthy. At the end of the day, I will be voting for her if I have to, but I would like to see somebody that is more likable and more trustworthy, and I think that that's what, uh, what Biden brings to the table. I, I think you and I agree. I think that in a presidential election, likability is very important because you're going to see that person on TV for the next four years, guaranteed. They're going to be in your living room all the time. So you've got to like them. And that factor, I think, is extremely important. So I'm surprised to hear you say that Hillary Clinton is not likable. What's not likable about her? She's got a lovely laugh. 
<laughs> and she was good on Saturday Night Live, right? She was very good on Saturday Night Live, yes. So those are things that I think are helping her in her likability factor. But at the end of the day, the, the email thing, I think, still affects people. Uh, all, all of the stuff that makes her not likable, I could go down a very long list. But again, <laughs> remember, you can't remember that I'm also going to still vote for her, even though I don't oh, like her. Oh, we heard that loud and clear. Tamara Holder, everyone, again, a fine performance. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay. I'm still on politics and still on Trump. I asked him if he's pictured himself sitting behind that desk in the Oval Office. Listen to his response. I'm starting to imagine it, but I don't even like to think about it. I just like to get things done. And right now I have the Republicans. You know, it started off with 17. Now two have dropped out. But it started off with 17, and, and I'm leading the pack by a lot, actually. Well, and, uh, you know, I think, I, I think that assuming Hillary gets it, she's had a terrible record as Secretary of State. I think we'll win that. All right. Former Oklahoma Congressman J.C. Watts is here. J.C., what a pleasure to have you on the show. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Now, here's Donald Trump saying, yeah, I'm going to win. I'm going to beat these establishment politicians. And you, sir, are, I'm not going to call you an establishment politician, but you are a politician. And here's Trump saying, I'm going to sweep you people aside. I'm going straight to the Oval Office. How do you feel about that? Well, well, Stuart, I, I, I think however long this interview is, we're wasting our time talking about Donald Trump. We should be talking about go buy Weight Watcher stock because <laughs> Oprah, Oprah's invested in it. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to get Donald but, Trump to tell me which stocks he dumped back in January. He was having none of that, but there you go. But, uh, but, but Stuart, let, let me tell you, Donald Trump has tapped into something that's been afoot since the 1992 campaign with Clinton and, and, and George Herbert Walker Bush and Ross Perot, Ross Perot tapped into it. It has grown over the last um, 20 or so years to the point yeah. that it is at, it is a, at, at boiling point. And so he, he's tapped into that. And, and it's, well, uh, as the lady, as Tamara said, it's a year left in the campaign. I don't know who's going to win, but he has tapped into yeah, something. JC, are you on that train? Are you on the outsider's train that's steaming out of that station and they're really picking up some steam? Are you on that on board? Well, I, I'm, a Rand, I'm a Rand Paul supporter. I like what uh, Senator Paul has done in terms of poverty and dealing with that. Uh, incarceration reform. I, I think he's on the right track there. You talking about okay. things that Republicans usually don't talk about. But Donald Trump, let, let me tell you, I can handle some of the issues that he's talking about. But, uh, you know, Stuart, I have a very difficult time when you paint with such a broad brush about women, about Hispanics, and, and then we justify it by saying that's just the way he is. Well, next, it's, it's black people, it's poor white people, it's Native Americans. I, I have a very difficult difficult time and I'm not defending Republicans or other Republicans when I say that I'm defending decency I, I okay. think there has to be a decency in in your presidential candidates okay JC Watts what a pleasure good to see you again sir you can thank you for having me on anytime you like good to see you thanks a good lot. deal <laughs> thanks thanks sure. how's this for a headline the Br uh, British Prime uh, Minister UK okay, thank David you. Cameron he's got a plan to fight radical Islam including closing some mosques. What do you think Judge Napolitano would say that, bearing in mind we have a constitution in America? All rise, he's next.